Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Every Mail. A little over a year ago, I found myself stepping into the role of senior project manager. For a long-standing client, I had been managing for quite some time. The transition into this new position seemed promising, until I began to realize the management style of my new boss, someone with whom I had never interacted during my previous role. It quickly became apparent that he had a penchant for micromanagement. One instance that stands out vividly is when he questioned me via Slack. We work from home full time about why he hadn't been invited to an internal team call. I explained my reasoning, assuring him that I had everything under control and his input wasn't necessary for that particular discussion. However, his micromanagement tendencies didn't end there. He began requesting updates on my lunch breaks, expecting notifications when I stepped away and returned, despite my Slack status indicating my availability. Furthermore, he insisted on being informed of my daily lock-in and lock-out times, regardless of his own online status. He even wanted me to outline my daily tasks within my Outlook calendar, hour by hour. The situation escalated when he expressed discontent over not being included in client communication emails, despite receiving comprehensive updates during our weekly catch-up meetings. Despite my efforts to keep him informed, through detailed reports and follow-up emails, he insisted that he be included in every single correspondence, citing transparency as his primary concern. I started to feel that I wasn't trusted and started to doubt my ability within my role. I battled with myself and wondered what I was doing so wrong. Every single email you say, I began including him in every email, whether it was directly relevant to our projects or not. From routine communications with colleagues to mundane requests for IT support or office supplies, his inbox soon overflowed with 20 to 30 pointless emails daily. Remarkably, not a single complaint about transparency surfaced thereafter. Only complaints about too many emails. It seems inundating him with every conceivable email served as the perfect solution to his insatiable desire for oversight. The next story is called Carless. I work at a niche construction manufacturing company as an estimator. It's one of those that require math skills, a minimum of a two-year engineering degree and attention to detailed, consistent production. They will train anybody who is capable, so it's a great job in this sense. The rub, however, is they offered me around $4 per hour below the living wage in my city and do not have a generous paid time off policy for all employees. I don't mind the work. I like my job, but the management is obsessed with control and pedantic review of your work. And fair races are always hard to come by, even when you improve in multiple areas. So it can get tiring to keep up the production when you feel you won't get a reward. We had an engineer meeting where they presented a new system for us. It introduces tiers slash levels based on your experience in the job. When management got to a section titled Grammar, Spelling, Carless Mistakes, they began to get condescending about having to include this. Our boss Garrett would say things like, if we are having to check your spelling, like I'm your English teacher, then we have a problem. So I said, hey Garrett, what is a Carless mistake? How can I avoid making a mistake without cars? Garrett looked up at the TV and blushed a little. After rereading that he had typed carless, not careless. Yeah, it is a careless mistake, huh? Was his reply as the guy sitting next to me goes, knock them down a pack. They emailed us a copy of the sheet after the meeting and I noticed they had corrected their carless mistake. The third story is called Quinceanera. A few years ago, my girlfriend at the time was invited to a backyard cookout slash sleepover hosted by one of her co-workers. 
Significant others were also invited, so I went with her. Everyone was having a good time. However, there was one guy, the boyfriend of a different co-worker, I'll call Bob, who was extremely obnoxious. You know the type, kept bringing up politics, trying to argue with people about it, etc. It wasn't the time or place to be bringing up that crap. These weren't his buddies, they were his girlfriend's co-workers. None of the significant others really knew each other or the co-workers. And because everyone wanted to be polite, no one was calling him out for acting like a jerk. We decided to play cards against humanity and one of the white cards I ended up with was Quinceanera. Based on my interactions with Bob, I had a feeling he would have a lot of trouble pronouncing a Spanish word. I purposely played that card when it was his turn to read aloud the answer cards. And as expected, he was unable to correctly say the word quinceanera, even after multiple attempts. Each time he tried, he'd get more frustrated and started turning red. Everyone laughed at his struggle to pronounce the word, which led to him rage quitting the game and silently sulking for the rest of the night. I didn't tell anyone about my small potatoes evil plan to embarrass him and didn't tell the girlfriend until the next day. She also got a good laugh. Sometimes the smallest of victories can taste the sweetest. The last story is called Corner Flags. This is a story my dad told me from back in the day. He played at a soccer club and they had a match that day. Everyone was ready on the field until the referee stood up and said the corner flags are too small and this dude actually cancelled the game for it. It was just students playing, so they were mad. Next week, the same referee is there to replay the match. However, they now checked in the rules book. Apparently, there was a minimum corner flag height, but no maximum height limit. So they decided to build 3 meter tall corner flags for the match. Everyone was laughing. It was even in the newspaper the same week. Fair to say, this time the corner flags were not too small. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.